This is a video of rapper MF Doom performing live at Rock the Bells in 2008. This is another video of rapper MF Doom performing live at Cool House in 2010. This is a third video of rapper MF Doom once again performing live in 2019 at Adult Swim Festival. While all these performances might seem normal, they all have one thing in common, one trait that links each show together, and that is that none of them are actually rapper MF Doom. Get the fuck out of here! Oh, the shit. fuck? The genre of music known as rap is one of the most diverse and rapidly changing forms of music. The rap genre has come such a long way from the bebop style of the 90s to the faster paced trap beats my generation knows today. From Easy e to Playboy Cardi, the rap world has grown to become one of the most popular and beloved styles of music for people all over the world. But when you think of the changes that the rap world has gone through, pointing a finger at where a change began can be difficult. Somewhere in between the smooth talking MCs and the faster paced hard cut style rap artists, someone had to break the boundaries of what was considered normal. A missing puzzle piece, if you will, to connect the two. Someone who was able to take the rap game and flip it on its head. Let me paint a picture for you. It's New York in the year 1994. A man by the name of Daniel Dumoulay and his younger brother Dingil Way have formed a small rap group called KMD. The brothers are hard at work at finishing their second studio album when suddenly Dingil Way is hit by a car and is sadly killed. However, Dumoulay, determined to finish what he and his friend started, finished the record and brought it to his record label. But due to the darkness of the album and the grim album cover which portrayed a Sambo character being lynched, his record label ended his contract. Still fighting with the death of his brother, Dumoulay was thrown out on the streets, nearing closer and closer to homelessness. Dumoulay's rap career was over, and he vanished from the underground rap scene for good. Or so people thought. As I tell the story of Dumoulay, you'll notice a very common theme, and it's that he is one of the most private artists in rap history. Very little is known about the five-year hiatus that he took, except that on September 22nd, 1999, Dumoulay broke the silence with a new solo album, Operation Doomsday, under a new name, MF Doom. Metal Fingers won producing, and Metal Face won rapping. Right from his very first album, there were some clear differences between him and the rest of the rap industry at the time. First and foremost were his use of samples. Dumoulay's style involved taking old cartoon TV clips and using them to tell a story. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Every time Dumoulay begins to write an album, he writes it from the perspective of a certain character, his most popular being MF Doom, a cartoon-like villain in his mid-40s whose only goal is world domination. However, this isn't the only character Dumoulay has created. His other characters include Victor Vaughn, a young man in his 20s who looks up to Doom, but secretly thinks he could do his job better. And last but not least, King Ghidorah, a three-headed serpent creature who uses mind control to take over the world? Yeah, that last one took a weird turn. But all of these characters are direct influences from Dumoulay's childhood. Doom and Victor Vaughn are both influenced by the Doctor Doom character from the Fantastic Four comics, and King Ghidorah is a character from the Godzilla universe. Using these old characters allows Dumoulay to sample old clips from cartoons from these franchises to help tell the stories. Some of his songs don't even involve rapping and are just instrumentals over these cartoon samples, devoting entire songs just to storyline. As luck would have it, one of America's two most powerful villains of the next decade is turned loose to strike terror into the hearts of men. Dumoulay also had a wide variety of subject matter he covered in his lyrics, almost rarely rapping about topics that were popular in the early 2000s such as drugs or sex. He would write love songs, sometimes even just singing about being hungry. He didn't care what the world wanted to hear him rap about. He cared about what he wanted to rap about, which was a large part of what attracted people to his music. Going back to the timeline, after Operation Doomsday was released, Doomley retired the MF Doom name for a few years, working on building up his other characters. After the release of Vaudeville Villain and Take Me to Your Leader, Doomley received a call that would change rap history forever. Yeah, I got a call one day from, um, it was from Peanut Butter Wolf up there at Stone Store. Wolf was a good friend of mine, Big Up Wolf. And um, he mentioned this cat Madlib. I wasn't familiar with his work at the time. But I guess he heard some of my stuff and he was reaching out to me so that we could do a record together, like, you know, and want to give me some beats and whatnot. 
In March of 2004, Madlib and MF Doom released the project titled Mad Villainy, and it is considered by many to not only be one of the greatest rap records in history, but also one of the most influential. This album gave Doom the nickname Your Favorite Rapper's Favorite Rapper because of how many people heard this album and lashed onto it, aspiring to be the next Doom. Yo, that rap snitches shit on the Doom album, yeah, that's easily one of the greatest shits ever. Rap snitches, selling all their business. Taking the cup, they be their own star witness. Do you see the perpetrator? <laughs> yeah, I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> We can't leave Sid out. We have some other rare item for you. Right here is the Mad Villain demo tape for you. That's the original Mad Villain demo tape. Wow. Wow. Where did you procure this item? So is that better than the box set? I don't know. A, I, maybe for me at least because this is the, like, the first thing that, that hooked me onto him. Please, sort of two different spaces. Emma Doom is like a non sequitur rapper. He's not really sticking to a subject. It's just about rhyme schemes and rhyme patterns. And as an MC, I know there's probably a lot of MCs in the building. When you, if you're a fan of Doom, you're a fan of wow. How you? He he makes you jealous. He makes you wish that you thought to rhyme Terry Cloth Kangos with very soft mangoes. But Doom was still hungry, literally. In November of the same year, Doom released Mmm Food, his most popular solo album to date. Every track is named after a different food item, with tracks like Beef Wrap, Gumbo, Poo Putt Platter. What? Anyways, these two massive releases in 2004 gave Doom a lot of followers in the underground rap community, making him the most popular figure amongst the underground rap scene. But he was never able to break into the mainstream, and I have a few theories on why that is. Doom, as I said before, is one of the most private figures in rap. He has a reputation of keeping quiet about his personal life. He rarely ever does interviews, and when he is seen in public, he keeps in his Doom character, always wearing a mask. For a long time, people would pay to see Doom perform live just to have a different person under the mask come on stage and perform. This leads us back to where I started. Three different examples of performances where people paid to see Doom perform just to get a different person underneath the mask. And while I'm sure most people watching this are thinking about what kind of a jerk would do that, but take a minute to think about Doom. The character, not the person. Doom isn't a hero. He's the villain in every story. He doesn't like being the good guy, and Doomalay doesn't like to write about heroes. When confronted about the Doom impersonators, Doomalay said that, quote, When you come to a Doom show, come expecting to hear music. Don't come expecting to see. Everything we do is villain style. End quote. He's not a good guy, and his fans don't like the good guy. They listen to his music to hear the villain. And this is why he's not compatible with mainstream life. He's too rough cut and private. Too many cameras and people looking his way wanting to know what's next. In fact, I don't even think he knows what's next. Doomalay hasn't released any solo projects under any of his many monikers since 2009, and while he has partnered up with other artists and produced a few tracks here and there, I think that he's waiting for the right time. Waiting until he's ready, not when the audience is. Waiting until he needs a villain. Thanks, sorry. You look like you have one more thought. <laughs> Who, me? I yeah. did. I was just going to tell you that I know what you were thinking about Mike Flynn today. It was the old MF Doom line. Snitches telling all their business, sitting in court and being their own star witness. <laughs> Already woke, spit a joke, barely spoke, barely smoked. Stared at folks when properly provoked, mirror broke. Hair share a strawberry morning, born and more important spawning. Torn in, poor men sworn in. Corners hen switching positions, auditioning morticians. Sword in a vision, ignoring prison. Ignoramuses enlisting, sound dumb. Found them, drowned in cows, dung, crowns flung. Rings a tinkle.